Hi everyone, I'm the Whiskey Enthusiast. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we're doing Oswald's category number three, best blended malts. And uh, our nominees are Douglas Lang's Big Pete, link up there. Uh, Campbelltown Loch, I didn't do it. I like it. I just don't, I've never had it here. Anyway, uh, Compass Box, no name, uh, batch three. We're going to do it today. Compass Box Orchard House, link up there. Uh, Douglas Things, The Goldrins, also link up there, but I have no idea how this passed into the, uh, I know I'm not supposed to sway you guys, but honestly, I've never met anyone who likes The Goldrins, so I have no idea how this happened. It was uh, in the in the short list, well, the long list that became the short list now. Uh, but I have no idea how it got passed through us as well. So apparently people like it. I don't know who. And the last one, Thompson's Bros. SRV5, 8-year-old uh, whiskey. SRV5, yeah, 8-year-old uh, blended malt. Blended malt, uh, by definition, means... Uh, few of the malts from different distilleries all single malts in their own respective parts and then married together that becomes blended malt different from blended whiskey because blended whiskey has grain whiskey in it as well i think uh cardu is credited for the uh for the for the name arriving of blended malt because in the i think in the 90s cardu decided to drop its age statement and just called it pure malt but uh, it was a single malt and it pissed the uh, Scotch Whiskey Association and uh, they had to make like clear cut rules and uh, the blended malt category was born. Uh, another person who pisses the Scotch Malt Whiskey Association is John Glazer, founder of Compass Box. I talked about him uh, before on the uh, Hedonism video also, I'll put the link up there, but uh, he's basically an ex Diageo whiskey maker at Johnny Walker and then he... Uh, he likes to be very uh, transparent. He gives uh, he, uh, he gives very a lot of information about where he uses his cast, what he does. Uh, so he's a bit of an um, a disruptor, but in a good way. We do like him. So this is the um, this is the box. It's nice and shiny like that. It comes with all these uh, look, 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 a little bit uh, imagery. I don't know. Like uh, Stranger and Stranger, uh, the company who does their labels. I think. People should also explain um, what's the idea behind the labels as well. I think that would have been uh, cool. I will read the information to you. I'll just show you the bottle. Cool bottle as well. Comes with this wax. Uh, this is the cap, but I like to keep it there. And uh, also this. This is batch three. I did not have batch one and two, uh, but I have had this one before and I enjoy it. Is it the same? information yeah but it's just easier to read from here so i'm just gonna read from here each installment uh in the no name series has followed the common structure one heavily peated malt whiskey dominates tempered by malt whiskey of complementary but subtler smokiness these are supported with unpeated malt whiskies which convey fruitiness elegance and spicy sweetness with no name number three, our sequence exploring Scotch whiskey's smoky spectrum can come to a fitting conclusion. Ah, okay, so this is the last one. Fans of the first no name will recognize a strumming tarry, tarry intensity, while the fruity fragrance hinted at no name two has been given a tropical makeover. Seaweedy and barbecue scented single malt from the Lafroig distillery takes top billing, with malt whiskey from the Beaumont distillery lending compelling hints of mango and pineapple at the very limits of ripeness. We feel that peatiness of no name number three has an operatic quality to it, vibrant and expansive, wild yet graceful. There is also considerable weight and resonance. Experience it neat, perhaps in the dark, when a little drama is called for. <laughs> John Glazer. All right. Um, basically, I also say um, we are Scotch whiskey makers. This word, whiskey maker, is our word. It doesn't appear in a dictionary. To us, it combines product and process, making them one, defining our approach. Each whiskey begins with an idea, a vision, formed through a combination of traditional practice and our own inspiration. Different than a distiller, more than a blender. We are Scotch whiskey makers. And uh, also there's like a little uh, thing there. This is going to be more reading. The, the wretched curtain rises on a big-boned, balletic and flamboyantly peaty new whiskey. It boasts considerable stage presence, despite having no name. 
And the great thing is on the back, it gives the malts. So Lafroy Distillery, Recharge Hawkshead 74.7. You know, let me just, uh, let me just pour first. Okay. Right. Continue reading. Beaumore Distillery Refill Bourbon Barrel, 11.3%. The Mortlock Distillery Recharge Barrel, 7.5%. The Klein Elish Distillery Refill Sherry Bud, 6%. And Highland Malt Blend, uh, Custom French Oak Cask High Toast, 0.5%. That's probably just to add a little bit of um, toasty note there. But it's mostly uh, Lafroig which I like a lot. Uh, bottled at 48.9%, ABV non-chill filtered and natural color. So it's a light uh, color. Right, let's dive in. Oh, that sweet, sweet smell of Laphroaig. Yes, it is there. I mean, it's 75% Laphroaig, so 74.7, 7, 74.7%, so 75% Laphroaig. Smoke. Cumin, a lot of cumin. Sea spray, sea salt. That Lafroig knows is there. The seaweed, iodine. But the medicinal part of it is subdued. Instead, there is very strong cumin note there. Maybe coming from Beaumont. Malty, very malty. Does not feel young. Feels a bit spicy though on the nose. But sweet peat. Sour. Lemon zest. Uh, sushi paper, which is also seaweed. A little bit of um, dusty note. Also meaty, very meaty. So, I mean, the meaty note could be uh, from Lafroy, Klein Elish, and Mortlach. So, I think they did a fantastic combination here. Putting Klein Elish and Mortlach together is a brilliant idea. But massive sea spray notes with a lot of oof, smoked cheese. <laughs> this is good. All right, on the palate. Ah, come on. Yes. I like Lafroig. What can I say? I really, really like Lafroig. That really, um, anything from Lafroig makes me happy. So, oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Tar, iodine, seaweed, sea spray, all that jazz, all that Lafroig jazz. Added with a treacle uh, sweetness, a lot of malty notes, spicy honey. It's on the back of my throat the honey sweetness is there but it's burning on the corners a lot of chewy notes dark cherry jam hint of it meaty very meat forward that honey glazed ham charred to perfection on the barbecue is the classic note i get but it's amplified now because the honey is amplified by the klein -elish. the meaty notes of Lafroig is even more amplified by Mortlock. Very chewy, just long for days. It's going. It's a long finish. Mm. Interesting. Out of all of these, uh, they don't necessarily give tasting nose, nose, palate finish. Oh, also, color natural filtration is no chill filtration. It's light five micron filter uh, i think that's just to get rid of any cask uh, chars or anything bottled july 2021 uh, number of bottles 10794 july 2021 huh okay so it's uh it's no longer it's not been produced for three two years now right i didn't know that okay anyway i mean there's not much i can say other than what I've said before, it's um, a lot of fresh pepper notes, apart from the seaweedy notes and everything. It's sweet, it's meaty, it's spicy, 
it's sour, it's cheesy, it's chewy, dry. It's just so well balanced. Like nothing comes too much. You feel the peat might be a bit overwhelming and then there's a sweetness that hits it. The more and more keeps the uh, peat of uh, Lafroig on the on the center. But yeah, it's the spiciness. You're thinking, oh, is it going to be too much? And then all of a sudden it's balanced by uh, the honey notes from the Klein English. And the meaty notes underlying from the Mortlock is just complimenting. Guys, I'm going to, if you like peat, if you like peat, Oh, sorry, I wasn't doing any recommendations. I'm not doing it because this is Oswald's. Uh, <laughs> I've shown my colors, though. I do like this one. But I love the Orchard House as well. And uh, you know my, you can watch my other videos of the uh, blended malts. Anyway, this was it for the blended malt category nominees, nominees in the uh, Oswald uh, nominations. And uh, let me know. Have you tried this one, No Name Batch 3? Have you tried 2 or 1? I haven't. I would like to uh, hear your thoughts on it. And uh, what do you think of Compass Box? It is a bit expensive, but they do do good whiskeys. Right, I shall see you on the next uh, nominations. And if you like this video, please hit that like button. If you haven't already, please uh, subscribe to my channel. It does mean a lot. And maybe hit that bell icon as well. I'm giving more videos these times when it's Oswas. And uh, yeah, go vote in the Oswas. It's important, guys. It's very, very important. Uh, make your voice heard. Thank you very much, and I shall see you on the next one. Cheers.